and welcome to the Caucus for Women in Statistics 50th Anniversary Presidential Interview Series. As part of our celebrating 50 years in 2021, we're interviewing our past presidents. This interview is of Elizabeth Margosius, our 1998 president, and she will be interviewed by Jan Desgupta, our 2022 president. Okay, it started. So Elizabeth, um, I want to ask you about the, um, you know, caucus um, history and your journey as the in, in the caucus and in your career. So I'm going to start with the question of, you know, when were you president and some of the things that you remember while you were president, and then we can continue with the other questions later. And I am going to try and not have myself on screen. So, okay. All right. I don't know whether we really should start with me during my tenure as president, because in fact, I joined the caucus in mid, the mid 1980s. And in the early 1990s, I was a rep at large for a year. And then in 1996, I think, they asked if I would like to run for president. And I have to admit, I don't remember against whom I ran. At that time, we still had opposed slates. And I ran to become president elect during 1997. And I was then president in 1998 and past president in 1999. Okay. And what was the other part of that question? <laughs> The other part of the question was, you know, what are some of the things that you remember? And, okay. you know, um, okay, so let's go, let's go with that. First. So I'll start with that. One of the first things I do remember being quite involved with was in 1989, which was nine years earlier, we had first had the Cox, the Cox scholarship run, it was the beginning one, and it was run jointly by us and the ASA's Committee on Women in Statistics. That happens to have been a year in which the joint statistical meetings were held in Washington. So it, it was a good time to have the first run. But that was a major part of what we did. We would have a, a, a hospitality table at every joint statistical meetings. And that was a place where people could, even at the last minute, sign up to run in the Cox scholarship run. And it also helped people, and lots of people came, as you know, because later years, you were sometimes at the hospitality table and we have been there. Um, people would ask, where are things? And so people noticed the Caucus for Women in Statistics, and that was very important. But one aspect of that was that we had a joint financing of that scholarship, and the ASA maintained the funds. Okay. Checks came in to us, and checks came in to the ASA also. At that time, they were written to the Cox Scholarship. Okay. And so it didn't really show whether they were ASA checks or caucus checks. So one of the things that was very important during my year was sorting out how we were going to handle the finances for that, uh, for that scholarship and be sure that everything was in order. And we settled it. We dealt with um, Steve Porzio, who is still at the ASA and got everything straightened out. At, for a long time um, before and during my tenure and a little after, Stephanie Ship was head of the committee, the, the Cox Scholarship Committee. And so she did a lot to help with us. And these were this was in the years also before Anna was treasurer, Marlene Altman was treasurer for quite a number of years. And so I have materials from her as well. Wow, great. Another, what? Well, I was gonna say another thing that 
didn't actually end up in the history until the following year, but we started thinking about in 1998 was having a web presence. Mm -hmm. And my uh, uh, husband's son was very into setting up things like web pages. And so mm -hmm. I said, think about how we might do this. And so we had a concept in place when it came time for the for my successor, who was Holly Shulman, to set things up. That's a huge contribution because I, you know, that's how I came to know about, you know, you know, I mean, you have told me, but that's when I, I looked it up and I found out what it was about. So that's a huge, huge, huge contribution, Elizabeth. Um, what is your favorite memory of your presidential year? Oh. Well, I think one thing that was really fun was JSM was in Dallas that year and traveling down there and knowing that everything would be happening there was, was I, I don't know whether I'd ever been to Dallas. I'd been to the outskirts, but not in Dallas itself. And that was fun. The hotel had a lot of artwork in it and we had a lovely reception. That okay. was very good. Okay, so, so anyway. this one, I think the next one, I think you have probably um, more information on this than anybody. So who was your executive committee and, ah. um, and who amongst this committee do you remember the most? Ah, well, at that time, we still had a Canadian section. So I'm going to read from, and this is going to show up on the recording, mm -hmm. our 1998 brochure for the Caucus for Women in Statistics. And the executive committee, I was president. The president-elect was Holly Shulman. The chair of the Canadian section was Judy Ann Chapman. And yeah. she's still active to my knowledge. She's in Kitchener, Ontario. The, past, the two past presidents were Sandra Stinnett who's at Duke, I believe, and she's, uh, and she was then. Uh, she's, she was the one the year directly before me. And Pamela Doctor, Pam Doctor, she was two years before me. Um, she went off, she was in the West Coast and stopped doing statistics as far as I know, probably about 15 or 20 years ago. So the reps at large were Nancy Allen, who later became a president, Christine Anderson Cook, who actually had been a former recipient, I believe, of the Cox Scholarship, Jill Montequilla, um, I've, ooh, Jill is remarried and I don't, or married, and I don't know her name right now offhand, but she's still active, and Mari Palta, who also later became a president. So we may have another interview, two interviews. Secretary was Sheely Lin. And she's been president. Treasurer in my year was Anna Nevius. That may have been her, a very early year for her. We had a historian, Susan Devlin. Susan had been at Bell Labs, and by this time she was in a group called the Artemis Group. Okay. And she was putting everything together. She also helped us try to figure out how to put an archive together. The membership chair was Jerry Mulrow. And it. our newsletter editor was Lynn Kelly. Okay. And one thing I remember about Lynn was a year or two later, yeah, in 2000, she spent some time in Paris and, and that was fun. We, we looked her up when we went to visit in Paris. Anyway. So I know this, I mean, you remember everybody, but is there somebody who really sticks out you remember the most? Who you want to give oh. a shout out to or something like that? No, I think they're all, I remember, as you say. Um, we had a lot of involvement from past presidents. It was great. Mm -hmm. I think Susan Devlin had a lot to offer to what we, how we set up procedures, 
Um, Sandra Stinnett had put together a history of um, women in statistics in here. And there was a poster, uh, there's an article that was for 1989. And I think we use that a lot to, okay. to refer to. Um, I remember even people from the from the 80s, Jane Gentleman was a president at one time. Um, Arlene Ash, Nancy Gordon, all of these people, and they keep coming to meetings. And so that was wonderful. But it was really through through the caucus that I met a lot of people like Ingram Olkin, mm -hmm. who who then was also a Scott Award uh, awardee. Mm -hmm. You know, he won that award as well as being such a notable statistician. Yep. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, in two words, describe how you feel about CWS. <laughs> Very positive. Great. <laughs> words. Perfect. Okay. So now we'll move on to a little bit more of the personal side of the interview. So it's kind of about your career path and things like that. So how did you become a statistician? Ah, that wasn't my original intent, but I had majored in mathematics. I was pre-med. Mm -hmm. And I didn't get into medical school. It was during the Vietnam War. A lot of um, a lot of men got into medical school because mm -hmm. they wanted to, but also because that was one way not to be sent to Vietnam. Um, so I tried two or three times. And while I was waiting, I went to work for Educational Testing Service, writing mathematics questions. Mm -hmm. And I was an experiment for them. They had never had uh, someone straight from school to write questions for the exams, for the SAT or the GRE or any of that. Uh, someone would always have teaching experience and I did not. But I think I must've been a successful experiment. They hired other people like me afterwards. Um, and they were willing to let me take a master's in statistics on, at their expense while I was working. And so that's how I started being in statistics. I commuted at night to Rutgers and took, took uh, classes, one each semester. Only I took a few summer school classes so that I could speed it up. So instead of taking five years to do a master's, I only took three and a half and worked at the same time. And then I decided I, I would try again for medical school, didn't get in, but became, went to become a biostatistician. And so that's how I changed fields completely. And I went off to the University of Michigan. And that too was a chance. The chair of my master's department had been at the CDC in the epidemiology, oh, there's there's something like the health public health service, mm -hmm. and and they had he had been there with the chair of the department at Michigan, and so he had suggested apply there, and so I did, and I went and I took a master's of public health, and then I stayed and did a doctorate. Wow, you know. That's how, like, the you know, chance encounters, chance things happen. That, you Absolutely. Know, it's, Absolutely. It's the way life is. Okay. Anything you would like to share regarding your career development from when you started to, you know, when you... Well, retired. one is jump on the things that, uh, that can ha help that you're interested in. I remember when I first started working, I... Well, I ended up at the Environmental Protection Agency and I had my entire statistical career there. Uh, that was partly um, the ex-wife of one of my statistics professors, actually my linear models professor, um, was working at the agency. And so she made sure that uh, 
somebody came from the agency to the job fairs at the public health school. And I said, okay, I want to be in public service. I want to do this sort of thing. And it seemed that the numbers were in Washington. If you wanted to deal with statistics, that was a good place to be. Um, and so, so I interviewed and then I took the, at that time, I think, I don't think I had to take an exam, but you had to fill out an SF-171 with all your history and then they would review it. And as it happened through most of my career, I, I, my studies, I was not a citizen. So I actually didn't become a citizen until about a year and a half before I was hired. And of course, I couldn't be considered for federal employment until I was a citizen. That's something people need to know if they are interested in working for the government and they can find out what jobs are available at usa.gov, usajobs.gov. Um, they must be a citizen when they apply. It's not enough to just have your papers in. You actually have to have your citizenship. So, is, so sorry. That's really good for a lot of the, you know, our uh, people watching this to know because, you know. That's right. That's why I'm mentioning it. Yeah. Because th that site, usajobs.gov, is still there. And even in these times, they're advertising openings. So it's, it, it's a good place to look. But you can't file an application until you have. Now, now until you have citizenship. But there are one or two agencies because they have uh, some non-civil service positions open or because they have interactions with international organizations. They may have some joint programs where you don't have to be a citizen. So for instance, the FDA has some positions that are uh, sort of like academic positions. Mm -hmm. And, and so they, I think you can apply for those. And if you are working, for instance, with Pan American Health Organization, it's a position for that. You may not have to have citizenship, but I don't know that much about them. Okay, yeah. So what challenges do you think faces the statisticians of today? Being heard. Mm -hmm. It's always there, I think. Um, people think that they can carry out their own mathematics, and sure they can, but it's the understanding, uh, the being willing to think about the uncertainty, mm -hmm. it, the, the practice that the statistician gains from having done it often, Mm -hmm. Even, especially if, you, if you're interested in being an applied statistician, you want to have had consulting classes. There are many things that are important. Um, and being able to write is a challenge, mm -hmm. I think, for all of us who would much rather be doing mathematics. <laughs> That's true. So I'm just going to ask you this. Um, any advice you have for the future presidents of CWS? Keep in touch with all your colleagues and also in, the, in other organizations because you all have the same problems, especially mm -hmm. as, as presidents. The, the committee on, um, what is it, COPS, mm -hmm. The Council of Presidents of Statistical Societies. It's a very important um, group of peers, and that's important to keep in touch with. Um, I'm thinking of a few other things that came up while I was president. For instance, we apparently at the very beginning in 1970 or 71, when the caucus first started, um, did put in papers for 501c3 status. 
which is, means that donations could be tax deductible, but it was never completed. And so during my tenure, we had a committee that completed the application. And so that's why now donations can be accepted. It's good to know to keep abreast of what is needed for that. Um, the other another thing that came up was um, we start during that year, I appointed a committee to start um, planning what became the FN David Award. Mm -hmm. And so you want to keep your eyes open to where women can be recognized. So that's not just statisticians, that's particularly women statisticians. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But for a while we tried to have a committee and I think they tried again, I don't know if there is one now to pull um, nominations together so that the various awards would be sure to have uh, nominees mm -hmm. from from women and and i think what what is it now the p3w yeah. committee yeah i think that's trying to look at that too because we want to rectify not only the fact that women aren't always seen but that that many um groups are not always recognized that's true that's true. Yeah. Thank you, Elizabeth. Any last words of advice? Anything you want to uh, put on record for, uh, you know, posterity? Oh my. <laughs> well, That's I don't a little know. daunting, isn't it? <laughs> for however long the images remain. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, I I think I've I've yep. touched that. Okay. And I certainly wish you well with your upcoming year. Well, I will be in time. A year to, yeah. to observe, yes. But but that is something that uh, I, that's one of the letters I just discovered in the fall before I became president. Um, I was expected to not, to identify people to be on different committees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so, so that's possible that as president elect, one, one does also have duties. Yes, we we had a uh, an operations manual that Barbara Tilly pulled together during her presidency, and then um, Mary Batcher enlarged on. But apparently, that that may not exist at the moment. So that would be a very useful yes I, I sure I think, <laughs> to okay. find. I'm sure we can find it. Anna may have a copy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Elizabeth.